Hi, it's Connecticut personal injury lawyer Ryan McKean here. Today I'm going to talk to you about juries in Connecticut. Now, very, very, very few cases ever get to a, a jury. And I mean, even before COVID and the pandemic, uh, Connecticut may have had 200 to 250 jury trials out of tens of thousands, if not 100,000 cases. So very, very, very few cases ever get to a civil jury. Um, the ones that do, they may even be one day cases or very short. So jury trials are actually pretty rare in Connecticut, um, which is unfortunate because if you're a lawyer, you know, you went to law school like me, you like to try a case. Like that's what, that's what, that's what you, that's exciting. It's what you, it's what you, it's what you want to do. But unfortunately we don't get to do it a lot. Um, so jury trials, first thing you need to know in Connecticut are really pretty rare. Um, the second thing you need to know is on a jury, there are usually, there are six jurors and two alternates in almost every case. And sometimes the judge may say, I think this is gonna be a long trial, maybe we need more alternates. But generally speaking, there's gonna be six jurors and two alternates. Now, what happens is if you are a uh, alternate, you watch the whole trial, and if at the end of the case, they need your, they don't need your service, you are temporarily excused but you could be called back if during jury deliberation, somebody gets sick or has to drop out, then you would become a, a, a full juror and just render a, a verdict. So in jury selection, what, what happens is Connecticut is the only state that I know of that has what's called individual jury selection, which means that jurors have a right to be questioned individually about their opinions, about maybe their biases, their life experiences outside of the presence of other jurors. Most states, they say everybody gets in a room and you know you ask questions to a group of people. In Connecticut, it is called individual jury selection. In individual jury selection in Connecticut, even for a jury to pick eight people on a relatively minor case, can take two, three, four days to pick a, 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 a jury. Um, just in, just in general, okay? And there are a number of reasons why a lawyer may or may not want to see a, a juror. Um, you know, sometimes people have very strong opinions. They say, you know, anybody who's in a car accident and brings a claim, they're no good. I'm not going to give them a penny. I don't care what, uh, what, what the law says, what evidence I hear. Um, my opinion is that all, you know, personal injury lawyers are scum of the earth and nobody should get a penny. There should be no lawsuits. And obviously, that opinion is not an impartial opinion. It is a, a, a very well-developed uh, belief that somebody has. So they're telling me that they will ignore the law. They will ignore the facts. And every person who has a court case deserves a jury who is going to follow the facts, listen to the facts, find the facts that need to be found, make judgment calls, and apply the law and listen to what the judge says to make a ruling. They're not gonna they're not gonna say I'm just I'm just gonna ignore that no matter what. So you know bias is 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 a big thing for whether or not somebody wants to be in a jury. I mean ideally if I'm a plaintiff I could have jurors that I believe would be favorable. That would be amazing. Um, that usually does not happen because the other side can strike jurors and and but basically the best we can hope for is a jury that's going to listen to my case, listen to the law, and do the best they can. And that's usually what 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 happens. Um, now with with jury selection, I mean a judge is going to say don't talk about the case, um, which is which is your obligation. Um, you know you should let the court know if you have any scheduling issues. Um, communicate with the court, but ultimately your decision is your decision. In Connecticut, you have no obligation to discuss that with anybody. Your decision is final, you come in, you reach a verdict, the four person reads the verdict, it gets entered, and you go about your life. Um, and um, you know, your decision, uh, whatever it is, is the, the right decision if you've, if you've done the best. So, you know, in juries are comprised of people from all walks of life. Um, Ideally, a jury should reflect the composition of the community, um, and I, I think it's it's a really important but under, misunderstood role. So I tried to give sort of a three hundred and sixty degree uh, or overview 
from 30,000 feet of what juries are, how they function, what they do. If you have any questions about this, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to me, 860-471-8333. There's some good resources on the judicial branch as well about jury selection in Connecticut and what to expect. It's always changing. They change the process up from courthouse to courthouse or, you know, over time things evolve. So you always want to check that in case you get a jury notice.